I felt that a guide dog would enhance my ability to uh, navigate the city and, and be more independent and mobile and that the dog would be a safer alternative to using a white cane in a very busy city. I knew as a teenager I wanted to get a guide dog. The organization that trained Jenny, my first guide dog, came to a, a summer camp that, for the blind that I had been attending and I took a walk with one of their guide dogs and I, I loved the ease of travel um, and the ability to just just get up and go and not worry about processing any of the tactile information that a white cane would give. I found working with the white cane was just a little bit too too much both mentally and physically speaking. And I, I saw some friends of mine with guide dogs navigating. I was about to go into university and figured, you know, the dog's gonna be a lot better for navigating a campus full of people. Hi, my name is Celeste. How has having a guide or service dog improved your life? So having a guide dog um, was a drastic change in the way I was able to navigate my environment. There's still, you know, obviously some focus and concentration and, and alertness that you have to have while working a dog, but because the dog is trained to guide the blind person around, it's not autopilot, but it takes a lot of the stress out of um, traveling. I think one of the things I noticed right away is that um, Colin's friend group expanded uh, considerably simply because there was people who would stop and talk about the dog and the dog invited people into the, his life and I think that social situation improved with the use of a guide dog. I think the safety factor improved and I think that just the, um, the companionship of an animal couldn't be underestimated either. I am so much more confident with her in my life. She improves my independence, my confidence, my ability to get out there and you know, do things that I normally wouldn't be comfortable doing, I can do now with her. So it's been a total life changer. When she got spayed, she couldn't come with me. And it was really hard. I'm pretty dependent on other people. Um, without her, I usually corral my sister or my fiance into going out with me um, just to help me with, you know, sometimes moving doesn't work so well, my hands don't work great, um, I get nervous super easily. You know, what happens if I fall and I hurt myself and I'm all by myself and no one's there to help. I remember one time in, in high school, I think I was in grade 12, and I, you know, big concrete steps and I just tumbled and I, instead of going up, I tumbled backwards and I fell down the flight of stairs. It was... That hurt. <laughs> it hurt, it hurt bad. She's tremendously helped Mary. I can go to a store and not have to worry about Mary being nervous or Mary not being able to talk. It's, so it's nice to be able to know that if I, if I leave her, she's still able to function on her own and not have to worry about her. Working with a guide dog has completely changed my life and really enhanced my freedom and my independence. I feel like I can navigate my world at a normal pace, a normal speed of walking. I'm no longer exhausted at the end of the day because of the mental energy that goes into using a cane. The dog is finding the curbs for me. The dog is moving me around those sidewalk signs. Like everything that sighted people are flying around on a day-to-day -day basis, I'm now at that equal position where I can just fly around it. I don't have to notice every single crack in the sidewalk, every sign, every pole. I can just walk and think about going A to B instead of 50,000 different things between A and B. He has made my life so much easier and I feel like I'm more independent than I was before, I feel safer. I can't say that uh, all my problems with my seizures have gone away, but they certainly, certainly are less. He has um, given my life a whole lot more happiness, and I couldn't imagine my life without him. I have been able to go places and do things 
because I've had a dog. I, I am a marathoner because I taught Jenny how to run with me. I absolutely believe that. I would never have run my first marathon if Jenny and I had not run our first two halves. It never ever would have happened. In terms of day-to-day -day life, I have um, gone to places with a dog um, that have been that would be very frustrating using the tactile feedback of a cane, even though you could. You absolutely could. It's a valid way to travel. And I will never say that having a dog is a better way to travel. It's a better way for me to travel. And maybe that's enough. Does your dog know that you're blind? I think they know that we're blind but I also think at times they think we're just stupid. <laughs> because from time to time, the dogs will do something like, oh, hey, I thought, couldn't you see that? I took you like within five feet of what you wanted. Can't you see it? And other times they'll take us right to whatever it is we've asked them to find. So as trainers, instructors, we, we all have our vision and it could be somewhat something that we're um, encouraging in the dog just because we have a bad habit of looking down at our dogs, which we really shouldn't do, um, because they're looking for that eye contact. And certainly when they're working with the handlers, we sometimes will see the dog looking up for that eye contact and not necessarily getting the same engagement, which could give them that sense of a change. Colin's dog, Rowan, seemed to know when he was blind, not that he was overly concerned about it, but I think he was aware and adjusted accordingly. Not all dogs are, I don't think. Um, and I could be wrong on that point. But it seems to me that just like everybody, they've all got their own personality, they've all got their own strengths and their weaknesses and, and their uh, awareness. Hi, my name is Hannah Hooklack. Will guide dogs and other service dogs ever be replaced by robots? I think the robot dogs are already in existence. I think they're an absolute stupid, horrible concept that never should have came about because it's a piece of computer equipment. Computers fail. If, a com if you're trusting a computer, quite literally with your life, is, what if it fails? Are you prepared for that? Are you prepared for the battery to die halfway through a walk? I think um, at the end of the day, most tech solutions out there are from people who do not have vision impairments who are trying to solve a problem that doesn't exist. I don't think robots will ever take over from guide dogs specifically because dogs like humans uh, can react to various different situations um, with, a, with an intelligence, with an extreme intelligence. They can uh, make decisions very quickly. Um, given different variables and there is there is an organic bond there between human and dog that wouldn't exist between a human and robot anybody who is a dog person understands what that bond is like dogs are very very good at um, observing human body movement and facial expressions they're actually um, extremely good at micro expressions they can tell they can predict our mood and our emotion based on our, on our micro expressions as well as our body movements and things like that. That's why dogs have been able to live with humans for the last 30 or 40,000 years. It's because they figured us out. There's a bond that you have between a dog and their owner. And a robot cannot replace that. A robot <laughs> has no emotion. You need that emotion. A robot guide cannot make you laugh until you cry. It doesn't have any kind of emotional intelligence. It is a, it is a computer. Jenny could find a Starbucks at 100 paces. I, I could be anywhere in the world and she would find me a Starbucks. Which is weird uh, because full disclosure, I don't go to Starbucks much. But I could tell her, Jenny, find me a coffee and she always would take me to Starbucks. <laughs> Um, but those are kind of fun things, um, which is 
you know, what makes working with a living, breathing being so much fun. Ready? I don't think I'd be here where I am now without her. I owe all my success to her and yeah, she's been incredible. Service dogs for those that need them. They are essential. I, I could not imagine my life without patients. I couldn't. Pow and I have a very, very tight relationship. I love Pow and I don't know what I would do if I didn't have him. <laughs>